Can you explain what automatic writing is and, and this channeling business that a lot of people don't quite understand or have anything any knowledge of? Sure. So. Yeah, well, you know, while, while we're sitting here, there are spirits involved in our conversation. There's spirits influencing even your questions, and they even influenced you writing down the questions that you had. And there's a lot of spirits involved in terms of uh, next to each person, in terms of guiding each person, but there's also other spirits who want to uh, influence uh, people negatively. And When it comes to spirits, I think that I have a spirit. My spirit is kind of like me, only I can't explain it. I don't know, because on one hand it's like me, but on the other hand it's like an annoying version of me that won't leave me alone and just tries to make lots of connections and fills me with imagination and ideas and visions and memories. And, you know, I, I don't really know what it is, but I would say that this is a spirit guide. It is me, but it's not me. And I, I can't describe it because I don't really know what it is, but I definitely would not say that it's some ghost in the other realm or some spirit that's not me. I think it's, it's my spirit. Spirit. But I feel like my spirit is connecting with other people's spirits and is being led and guided and influenced by them. And my spirit is connecting me with certain memories or visions according to what my spirit wants me to see. And I feel like humans or sprites on earth have developed this spirit in them just in the same way that God has a spirit. You have a spirit too. And I think a lot of people might not have that much confidence in their own abilities. So they like to make out that their spirit is someone else's spirit or some spirit that they're contacting. But really, I think the spirit guide is actually just like a version of themselves, only like a semi-conscious other them, even though it is them, but not them. I feel like everyone has a higher self and a voice inside their heads. And I feel like a lot of people can take this voice, which is actually just them, their own mind, their view on beliefs and stuff. But sometimes they tap into God and maybe they do hear messages from God, but they're usually very short, or at least that's how I hear these messages from my higher self, just very, very short and messages that don't usually make sense. I feel like if I'm just talking to myself in my head, that is something different to this voice that seems to lead me or say something that doesn't really make much sense or something that I'm not certain that is real. But when I go and look and do what it said or, you know, post what it says, I feel like then I can prove that actually what it's saying is something real because the next thing I go and post, it's almost like it's connected with what this voice said and then their spirit is something that gives them inspiration gives them visions and stuff and I feel like they mix these two together and often they tell themselves that this is a different spirit but I, I don't think it is I feel like there is a different spirit but this is the spirit of God this spirit connects with lots of people and you know helps guide people and there might be a, a third spirit which is like the overall consciousness of the world and forming some type of beehive mind where we can all work together to create a better society a better world so yeah i feel like that is all the spirit is but of course there is also the spirit of inversion which is where you take everything that anna or god believes and invert it tell the opposite and you confuse your own spirit with her spirit and the confusion that you get from this inversion and I feel like sometimes you can tap into other spirits but I feel like these other spirits are not things that are in some sort of other realm but I think they're actually humans on earth who have energies and you know a spirit of their own and, and you're just tapping into spirits but spirits of people who are alive on earth so that's how I would explain the spirit and yes I do think that my spirit has inspired these questions and got AJ to say certain things that would inspire me to say sort of certain things. And I feel that the people in this video have a spirit of their own which is guiding them. But that spirit I feel is being guided by my spirit. That's how I would describe it. If you want to start believing that this spirit is someone else's spirit, I guess you can. But I feel like you would actually be far better off believing that it's just you and your spirit because it would give you more confidence in you rather than thinking that you're just being guided by someone else and influenced by someone else you know see this spirit as just you only not you I feel like you're gonna less likely go crazy if you do that and in the first century I recognized and saw that quite early in my life and I wasn't impeded as most people were by being blocked to to those particular interactions with the spirit world and my friend John the Baptist, he also had a strong uh, feeling for spirits and he could see spirits as well. And so that meant that we could, myself and John, we were only six months apart in terms of age, we could often talk to spirits when mum and our parents weren't around 
And so we often learnt a lot through that process. And for me, that's when it began. For Mary, it began in the first century as well, like that, where she recognised communication with spirits. And I've done this too. I don't think I actually do it right now, but over the timeline, I have talked to spirits. So I talked to, in the past, this is Ellen Degenerate. I thought she was quite a funny one to talk to. Again, I've just thought about it and I can't actually think of anyone else because it was such a long time ago that I haven't, you know, thought about it. I haven't done it recently. But I know when I was doing this, I was actually thinking about people who are alive on Earth and just kind of like imagining conversations with them. I had so many fantasies about getting on Big Brother and, you know, all the things that I would say to them or do. And I'm just, I'm just tired of fantasizing about things that never meticulate or never happen that I've stopped doing it now. I feel like my brain is just exhausted and I've just given up on everyone. So I... I feel like I used to talk to spirits, but by that I just mean creating imaginary conversations in my head with people who are alive on Earth. But, you know, there's so many things that I wanted to say and I never got to say it. I never got to speak to them. I never got anything. And, and, and therefore I've just, I've given up on the world. I've given up on people and like, just suicidal now. I guess in all fairness, sometimes I see things that they post and I feel like I hear their voice saying something to me and I do talk back and respond. And I guess this happens all the time, but right now I can't tell you an example of who I spoke to or what I said. It's um, it's something that just pops into my head, like the imagination, like the visions, they pop into my head. And likewise, if I'm seeing something and I see someone or have a memory of someone, sometimes I feel like they say something to me and I say something back. But because it's all a fantasy, it's all in my head, you know. I feel like I ignore it and just try to pretend that it's not happening, but it, it is. But I feel more comforted, you know, I feel very alone most of the time and, and therefore sometimes I feel like I have conversations with people um, to make myself understand how they feel, even though I'm not actually talking to them, so it's, it's a bit confusing. A memory of something has just popped into my head, which was like a year ago I was going through some extreme depression and I just felt like the whole world was going to collapse and I swear I heard Ed Sheeran's voice come into my head saying something and can't actually remember what the conversation was you know you don't remember your everyday conversations and if you're having everyday conversations with all the celebrities at the same time or you know throughout the day but randomly you know you wouldn't remember your conversations either and that's kind of how I feel like I, I have conversations but because it's not a real conversation it's hard for me to continue remembering it and I think it's because of this that I feel that everyone has a spirit because I'm sort of contacting I feel like I'm contacting spirits, but at the same time, it also feels like it's part of my imagination I'm a, and I'm only doing it because I'm not having any conversations with people. But it doesn't feel like I'm not having any conversations with people because I feel like I'm having conversations with people all the time. So I don't understand it. I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. On one hand, I'm not having conversations, but on the other hand, I feel like I'm having them all the time and my brain is just kind of fried with all of it. But I was certainly under the influence of a lot of spirits without recognition for a long time as well. Mm. And that is the reality for just about all of us on the planet at the moment. Mm. Positive at, or negative? Both. both. Okay. Mm. At all times. Mm. And, and well, at the majority of times, yeah. Mm. Now, there's a, there's a, since the New Age movement began, there's been a lot of people claiming to have channeled a lot of historical figures. And... Mm. You say that a lot of these people have been deceived mm. because we really don't know who's behind the curtain, do we? It's you know they well, say they're somebody, but yeah, unless you can physically see them and also feel well, their discern from a place of yeah, love. feel the love in the person <laughs> yeah. that you're yeah. speaking to. I find it's kind of strange how these two are like a sort of counterfeit of me. Only we tell the same thing, the same story, only we tell it in a different way. You know, they are saying that they are being contacted and influenced by spirits, you know, all the time, all over the place. And I'm saying the kind of same thing, only I put these spirits to a face, a face that's actually alive on earth. You know, I'm all about the physical, I'm always all about proof and evidence, and, you know, I'm on Instagram. Not TikTok, but on Instagram constantly trying to just see what people post. And I feel like through these posts that I see, I do have conversations with them. But yeah, I'm focused more on the physical. So it's interesting how they can say that and even talk about, you know, the importance of seeing the face and, and you know, feeling love or whatever, like feeling the connection and knowing who you're talking about. Yeah, unless you can physically see them and also feel their... Discern from a place of... 
Yeah, feel love. the love in the person <laughs> yeah. that you're yeah. speaking to. You know, they just said what they just said, as if they are talking about, you know, a real person, a real physical image. And while for an example of what I'm going through, you know, last week I went to go and see my sister's newborn baby, who's like five weeks old. But just before I left to go and see them, David Guetta posted this picture. And every time I would see the father with my sister's child, a child that is seriously cute. But every time I looked at that child, this image would pop into my head. And, you know, I can feel the love in this image, but I'm actually seeing a real image. I'm actually seeing a real person. So it was like I could feel this David's, like, energy or something, and, and it kind of made me want to join him in his bed. But, yeah, how can AJ Miller say that and not actually link it to a real person or a real image? Yeah, unless you can physically see them and also feel or their... Discern from a place of... Yeah, feel love. the love in the person <laughs> yeah. that you're yeah. speaking to. So it's interesting how they can say that, and yet they don't actually know who they're talking about because they think they're talking to the dead and something in some realm that I, I'm not sure even exists, you know. It's very strange and it's very odd, but it's, it's like they are connecting to truth. They're connecting to truth of me, and I am the person behind, you know, this curtain that is inspiring them to say what they're saying, but I can't think what they think they're saying is the truth because... I don't think it is. How can they think this is the truth when, like, I know this is the truth because I know what I'm doing. I'm literally on Instagram and I'm literally seeing these different angels that have angel names and I feel like they're saying different things according to their names. So that, that's actually physical something. And this is similar to me, only it's, it's not a physical something. It's all um, them saying that something is real when I don't think they actually have the evidence or proof to back it up. So how do you um, discern who, what, you're communicating with? Well, a lot of the people we communicate with are people we knew on Earth in the first century. So, you know, they're people who have been with us most of our lives for 2,000 years. So, Yeah, in the same way, the spirits are all around me. You know, they're on my Instagram page, they're on the TV, they're on general news that I look up, they're on Facebook, I get YouTube as well. I'm a big watcher of YouTube videos and, yeah, people are always talking about certain angels and, you know, saying that P Daddy is so awful, but... Nicki Minaj and 50 Cent, you know, they're my best rappers. And I'm just like, hmm, what kind of person are you? And then I named the Temple of Inversion and that same guy a week later was proudly walking around it saying, you know, wow, look where I am, mummy. But yeah, just like you said, Jesus, my counterfeit me. I get a lot of sort of, you know, images and stories popping up on my phone about them. They're all over the place. For that reason, we know them very well and we know who we're talking to. Um, for others, it's a matter of seeing, of, of testing the spirits that come to speak. So the way that you do that is by asking them things about their life and asking them to describe their life on earth and talk to them about their individual circumstances. And in many cases, you can verify the, the, the person, uh, that person's life, you know, when they were on earth at least, and verify when they die without actually... Uh, after the event of talking to them so you can easily see whether they were person lying about those events or not no 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 they haven't died yet but yeah okay i will do that when we all die i will you know go and clarify with them that they know the day they die i i don't actually know i don't even know if there's a spirit realm but yeah when i die and go into wherever i'm from i will look back and um, remember the timeline or something Anyway, getting back to the real world. And if I ever meet the singers, you know, you can like try and confirm with me that you are the singers and you're not just some sort of like counterfeit person. You know, that might be a good idea because you know, there's a lot of these counterfeit people around, you know, like copycats or celebrity imitators, I think they're called. But yeah, Jesus is my celebrity imitator, only he looks nothing like me. So really, he shouldn't be an imitator of me. But anyway, him being my imitator is a little bit like a black guy claiming to be Britney Spears, you know. You know that's not Britney Spears, but if you don't actually know who Britney Spears is or what she looks like, then maybe the black guy is Britney Spears. I would say there's more to it for me. Mm -hmm. Did you want yeah, to... Yeah, no, keep going. Um, uh, for myself, it requires a level of emotional openness to what it is I'm feeling and um, a dedication to my own growth in love. Uh, the more that I feel I can be discerning about my own emotional condition and and what is truly loving and feel with honesty the emotions that are within me, the more I feel I can do that with you and also with the spirits involved. So I'm not sure if that's probably a fairly foreign concept to most people, mm. but um, I feel that if I'm in connection with what I, it is I'm really feeling, 
not afraid to, to feel what that is, then when I'm sitting with you, I'll also be open to what you feel. Because the, most of the, the time, the thing that blocks me being open to what you feel mm. is something that's going to be triggered in me when I feel what you feel. Mm. Does, is that... A, mm. Yeah, and equally, um, I f have the same experience with spirits. Mm. And so if a spirit comes to me full of rage and anger and I can feel that and then they try and tell me they're from a, a sphere that's quite developed in love, I immediately know that there's a there's mm. an untruth yeah. being spoken. I kind of tell myself the opposite. I find myself telling myself that the singers are all just really caring people that just can't talk to me for some unknown reason and I feel that cheers me up. If it's the truth, I don't know. I don't know what they're planning, but I like to believe that they're supporting me. I like to believe that none of them are bad. I like to believe that my higher self wouldn't have put them in the authority that they have, wouldn't have given them the wealth or fame that they have if they were generally bad people, you know? Like, I believe you two are liars, but I don't see you as being bad people. I don't see you as deceivers. I see you as two people who are channeling the spirit but understanding things wrongly, but I feel you are generally trying to understand it just as I'm trying to understand it, but we have different interpretations because we have a different purpose or role in life. Your purpose is to talk about the spiritual realm and talk about it as if, you know, it's a place that you want to get to, whereas I'm sticking with the physical and I'm trying to get people on earth to try and understand the psychological or spiritual aspect of being a physical form and the power that you might have and the influence that you have. You know, a lot of these singers and YouTubers are called influencers and I feel they're called this because their spirit is influencing people and I feel drawn to certain people because they have strong energies and I like these energies and I'm, I'm not following them out of anger or out of their anger or if I feel they have anger, I feel there's a reason for that anger, like they've gone through something bad in their past, you know. In a way, I kind of feel like Akon has gone through something bad in his past, but I feel the strength and I feel his love and I, I don't focus on his negativity, I focus on who he is and I don't feel that he's a negative person in any way. Do you know, I think to claim that you love lots of people and then to claim that there are spirits that come in anger and try and inflict you with anger, you know, I feel like that's not really talking out of love because if, I don't know, but I can't tell you one spirit that I feel comes to me in anger. If anything, I'm the one with the anger because I'm the one that's being ignored, you know, the singers and celebrities are mostly living a much better life. So I, I feel, if anything, I'm the angry one and, and they're the one that's living in joy, so... But I, I try and focus on the positive and not on the negative. You claim to come with love, but yeah, if you're focusing or saying that these negative spirits exist, then I don't know if it's the truth because I, I don't feel that. But if you do, I'm tempted to think that you're actually just sensing my anger, my rage that I'm pouring out because of what I'm going through. I think by also, also, if I can just address the other part of the question that you asked, and that is, why is it that they're always famous people, that, people who are mm. channelling? And that is a very, very interesting question. And, and the main answer to that is the fact that the person on earth wants it to be a famous person mm. <laughs> that they're channelling. And so, therefore, they are open to suggestion uh, by anybody that, you know, so it's a bit like if you couldn't see me, and I came along to you and said, oh, I'm a famous person that, you know, I thought would appeal to you. And you wanted to believe that. You would just probably accept it. And then we'd have a talk on the basis of me being that famous person. Um, over a period of time, if, I, if you were open to my feelings and you started questioning me in more detail, you'd soon find out probably whether I'm speaking the truth or not over a period of time. Mm. The problem is, is that most mediums on the planet are not open to doing that because they want every single person who comes to them to be a famous person in history and there's billions of people who have never been famous on earth but uh, but are who, who are to. surrounding the earth constantly mm -hmm. and who want to have their moment of fame and so it's quite easy for them then to just falsify their um, you know their identity by that you're actually referring to the mediums who lie the mediums who lie want to have the sort of fame and wealth that the celebrities have and they can't have it so they start channeling or pretending to channel these people to try and make themselves be famous you know the same thing happened with god and christ you know people like to think that they're talking for god or christ because it gives them kind of a bit more power it makes them feel like they have a bit more authority and likewise if a medium can claim to be talking for a celebrity or a famous person you know they captivate 
the audience and the interest of the audience because the audience know these people and they want to you know find out what they're saying and it gives more power to the medium but yeah we need to put a stop to this because for thousands of years people have done this with Jesus and with Christ and with God and you know they're all lying they're not telling the truth and likewise these mediums who pretend to be talking for the dead they're not I feel like they are picking up on energies and they're picking up on a person's life but the number of mediums who would know that Aaliyah is actually alive on earth right now you know that's very very few so people do not have the truth and they need to stop learning to think that it's okay to lie lying is not good in this world of technology things are getting more complicated and we need to start telling the truth for us to find out the truth about you know what the truth is and we can't do it with all these people that are just trained liars but yeah, we can lie until we've just reduced the population. Just don't do it after that. Yeah, people and have in, a connection. People in spirit are really people in spirit often. <laughs> they haven't changed much from when they were on Earth. And yeah, and if they could the falsify same... something and get away with it, they yeah. will. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny how you say that whilst falsifying something that, that you're actually doing whilst pretending that you're talking about other people. What you're trying to say is if you can falsify talking to the dead, then you will do it because you think you can get away with it. And me being the spirit that's influencing your spirit, you know, I'm okay with this because I want it to be part of the test or I want it to be a test just for the world, just before I rise, you know, to see who believes you. Now, you've, this knowledge, you've said that there's going to be earth changes in 2012. Did you have this knowledge or did you get this knowledge from celestial beings that have, that have, that have given you this knowledge or because in about 20 years ago I read a number of different channeled uh, books that purported to have been Andronicus and all sorts of things mm -hmm. and they also claimed of calamities that were going to happen in the late 80s and then the late 90s and and the Jehovah's Witness as you say have had people say that it was going to happen in 1914 um, this knowledge that you've got, uh, well, first of all, can you tell us what you believe is going to happen next year in 2012? Well, the interesting well, thing is that we don't have any um, what I would call um, firm time frame for events that will occur. We just have uh, we, we just have our feelings to go by, and my feelings are often different to Mary's feelings yeah, on that particular matter. Yeah, yeah, we need to state that. And probably. So my feelings, my feelings are that um, sometime over the coming few years, there are going to be fairly significant Earth-based events that are caused by a combination of events. The two events primarily that are causing it is the amount of resistance and fear on the planet that's causing mankind to take certain actions that they're taking to destroy the planet and then the corresponding uh, force of God's love permeating through the universe in ever-increasing dosages, if you like. And the, the combination of these two factors cause events to actually occur, in, in fact, cause the evolution of mankind into a more positive condition. I think you're right about that. You know, my birth of the new sprite species started in March 2013. So you're just a few months off in your 2012 prediction. I'm pretty sure you're feeling um, disappointed that nothing's happened. Well, I am too, because I haven't revealed my truth. But technically, I have been going through some horrible process and I can't understand why people aren't talking to me and I get hugely angry and yeah I'm being really calm right now and I know that when I'm not in a calm mood everything that I've said about me liking celebrities suddenly you know turns upside down but it's a type of pregnancy I see it as. I just wish I knew the future. I wish I would have known that people would have ignored me for so long because, you know, I wouldn't have stayed in the studio flat. I wouldn't have stayed in London. I would have moved to Birmingham straight away. I just, I had no idea that this was the plan. No one can see the future and it's, it's really horrible. But the worst thing about it is that people must have known that their plan was to ignore me for 11 years. You know, people must have known this in 2013, 2014, 2015 and so I'm looking back over these years just feeling completely humiliated. You know, I was literally in a studio flat waiting every day for something to happen and these people knew that they were going to ignore me for 11 years and they all chose to ignore me and not tell me. You know, I'm furious and I don't think I can ever be friends with these people. 
they're not evil bad people but they are people that didn't give a shit about me but yeah the change is definitely being felt now don't know why it's taken so long i think there's just way too many people on earth my spirit is affecting and linking with people but i can't link with eight billion people that's just impossible and because i can't link with eight billion people i think a lot of people are just becoming inverted and doing the opposite and you can't have two hamsters trying to work a hamster wheel but going in the opposite directions um and they do affect physically every single thing in the universe so every single thing in the universe has a raised potential of evolution as god's love permeates each each of those creations but from what I heard you describe, it sounds you, you were, I think when you were giving a seminar in Greece, you mentioned three super volcanoes, a, well, I a also, shift of tectonic uh, plates and a, and a reversal of the polarity and, yep. and large water. And that sounded fairly dramatic. <laughs> well, you know, in 2013, this was June 13th, 2013, I had those same I had those same visions, so I saw London literally breaking up with lava pouring out of it. Part of me felt like I'd just woken up in like the future, like I was seeing something that was going to happen in the next few hundred years. I had these visions when I was living at my parents' flat in Hampstead. My parents' flat is on a hill and you get a really good view of the whole of London. And you know, the view I saw, London looked very similar to how it looked now. So when I looked out the window, it looked like I was looking at London in perhaps two, three hundred years. But in a way, it felt like I was seeing a distortion of it and I was actually seeing the world literally crack up and lava spilling out. We're talking in the future, yes, but not too far in the future, like in the near future. It was a very weird three days. But for patches of these three days, I felt like I kept having visions where perhaps I was like someone else, like the next Christ in my next life because the technology seemed like really hard. Like I had an inspiration to watch a DVD, but I couldn't remember how the DVD worked because I felt like I was looking at technology that I didn't know how to use. So I felt like I was having visions, but it wasn't necessarily of visions that was gonna happen straight away, but it was like visions that was gonna happen in the next 300 years if I didn't do whatever the voice in my head said. I've never taken drugs before, but in a way it felt like I had taken drugs because I'd spent, you know, a couple of months seeing lots and lots of signs that I was going to be on Big Brother. And then on June 13th, it felt like, like, what the fuck had I just done? I literally just packed my suitcase to get on this show. The show hasn't contacted me. I don't believe that I'm on the show. So, you know, I don't know. I felt like I went through a, a temporary mental breakdown for three days. And then I just ended up having to shut it off being like, this isn't real. You know, I don't know what this is. Well, I'm obviously going through some mental breakdown and I don't believe this. I was an atheist on the 12th of June and now I'm having some mental breakdown and I can't cope with this. You know, I really felt like I had just woken up in a computer. Everything was linking to me, but I also felt like I woke up at the wrong time, like like I wasn't meant to wake up or I couldn't understand why no one was helping me or you know telling me what was going on. I was having these strong visions. I was linking my name to everything. I felt like there was a voice in my head strongly talking to me. It was a very horrible thing. It was three days of just a nightmare. Like I, I also had visions of people just running down the, the street that I was living out. I was in my parents' flat during this time. And I, I had dreams of people coming down like with axes wanting to murder me because I was some sort of witch and you know I felt like the street had been closed off by the policeman or something because they knew that I was about to wake up or something you know, I was having some serious horrible visions and then I just stopped after three days I was like what this is too much I don't know what this was about after a month like in the first two weeks of July I did look back on those memories and I felt like I felt like they were actually trying to scare me it was the spirit trying to scare me into saying that if I didn't say or do everything that this spirit or this voice in my head was telling me to do this is what was going to happen so it's not like it was saying this is going to happen but it was almost showing me the seriousness of what I was about to experience and how important it was that I do whatever the spirit or the voice was telling me so I, I feel like it's actually a, a fear tactic thing I think AJ might have had these visions and might have believed the same things that I believed because someone was telling him that he is Jesus and he needs to do this interview or do interviews to say this and you know the world might end if he doesn't you know it doesn't mean that that was actually the truth or what's going to happen but I feel like it was something that the spirit made him believe to get him to obey the spirit and I feel like in that same way this was exactly what happened to me I tried to stay rational and logical about it but it was a very awful experience 
just because it didn't happen, that doesn't mean that I didn't experience this. Likewise, that's how AJ feels, I bet. But the rea uh, remember, if you listen to that entire discussion that I had in Greece, mm. right at the start of the discussion, I put in a fairly major disclaimer, which was, I actually felt that that's what would happen, that, that that's the feeling I had at this particular point in time. And while I still have those same feelings that those particular events will occur, um, that doesn't mean that there isn't a potential for them to change. Secondly... So um, you said about March or April next year at the that's time. That's what I said at the time. I said at the time, this is what I feel. I met Martin March the 7th, and ever since I met him, I felt like a spirit was following me round, but he had connections with Big Brother, and for some reason, I felt like this ghost was telling me that I was going to be on Big Brother. I had wanted to be on that show for about 10 years, so I feel like maybe AJ was making a prophecy, he was making a prophecy about something that was going to happen to me, but yeah, it turned out I wasn't going to go on to Big Brother. It turned out I was going to wake up and realise that I was Christ. What a fucking disappointment that turned out to be. But you're not so sure about that now, is that what you're saying? No, no, what I'm saying is that people ask me what I feel and all I can ever do is tell them what I feel at that time. So this is an intuition more than a, a message from... Yes, and I've, said, I've stated quite categorically that until I'm at one with God, mm. I cannot state for certain any particular event of what will occur in the future. It's only when you're at one with God that you can do so with any degree of accuracy. By that you mean when you finally know who I am and you get to talk to me. Yes, I'm on earth, I'm in physical form. I'm sure you'll get to know me one day. If that's what your interpretation of being one with is, then okay, but yeah. We ain't gonna be one, by the way. But we can meet one day. You're just understanding everything incorrectly. Now, you, you said that it took you till about the age of 30 to be at one with God in your first incarnation. Yes. When, when, uh, and you say that you're a work in progress at the moment. Yes. When do you believe that time is going to come? Well, in the first century, what happened was that you know, I was about 18 years of age when I started to contemplate that I was possibly the Messiah that was foretold in the Bible that I'd, you know, in the parts of the Bible that I'd read at the time. It wasn't called the Bible then, obviously. It was the books of the prophets that we used to read as Jews. And, and after reading my way through those and having a deep interest in those for many years of my life in the first century, by the time I was 18, I started to contemplate that perhaps I might be that particular Messiah that was spoken of. Counterfeit Messiah, I think you meant, but whatever. Technically, Messiah just means messenger, so yes, you can be this messenger. But there's many of them. And by the time I was 21, I was quite certain that I was that person. But I realised that I had to do quite a lot of development in love to become that person. And so it took me around, if you take from 18 to 31 years of age, was when I became at one with God in the first century. In that, so it took me 13 years, if you like, for me to become at one with God in the first century after having a concept of what that meant uh, inside of myself. Nah, sorry, you don't have a clue what that really means, but whatever. You actually represent the average person, and the average person doesn't have a clue, but many think that they do. And you claim that you were the first human being to have ever done that? Yes, the uh, first per person in this planet to have ever done that, yes. Um, I do feel that there are persons on other planets who have done that, mm. uh, and there was always a first. It's a bit like there's a there's a first person to discover flight, and there's a first person to discover yeah. all sorts of scientific endeavours. No one knew who God was until 2013. I don't believe anyone is at one with God, except for me, of course, so this is what the prophecies are about, about Christ being at one with God because we are the same person and yes I do feel like a they because there's often times where I can say something and then contradict myself and say the exact opposite thing and I feel like this is just the different sides of me either remembering different things or feeling different things even though I'm feeling them at the same time which is a bit complicated. Like. And so you can see yourself working towards this same state yes. in this life? Yes, so uh, it was only about eight years ago that I recognised um, and had the memories of who I was returned to me and also then uh, recognised within myself the desire to become at one with God again in that same sign of condition. I think you're more referring to yourself becoming one with your past life. You are gathering lots and lots of memories and you can give quite a good accurate description of your past life so 
I feel like you're saying that you're trying to become one with God, but really you're just trying to become one with, you know, your past life. But on top of that, you also believe that you and your married partner are, you know, soulmates, hence one soul together. So it's like you're saying you're going to become one with God, but you're also saying when you die, you're going to become one with your partner. You can't have it both ways because that's kind of cheating. I'm not her, you know. Well, actually, in ways I feel like I am her. That's what you're talking about, I think. I think your girl does kind of represent me too in ways, like she's saying a lot of things that I agree with. So I feel like you're confusing God with your partner. You are welcome to become one with your partner, but I don't actually know if that's a real thing because I don't actually believe in soulmates. And so for the last eight years I've been working towards that goal. And if it takes me another eight years, um, I wouldn't be disappointed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. so, um, there now, when you were in this state in the first century, you had a reputation of being a healer and a miracle worker. Is this, is this true? Well, parts of it were true. Um, there were certain things that it was claimed that I did that I didn't actually do. Um, and, but there were certain things that I certainly did do. Um, but that only occurred after I became at one with God and it was dependent upon God. It wasn't, it wasn't something that I could do at my own, uh, well, really? well, at my own choice, if you like. It, because my, but because my choices were in harmony with God's, when you become at one with God, your choices are in harmony with God's. It meant that my choice was the same as God's choice. And under those circumstances, I could heal if the person who was who was being healed also had a desire to be healed. I don't believe that happened. But I do think you've got a very good connection. I can feel it on you. I think you're understanding everything incorrectly, but, but you definitely do have a good connection. But technically, I would say the same thing about the person who's interviewing you. I mean, he's taking you quite seriously. And in a way, I don't think he does believe, but he's actually giving you a lot of respect and saying the right questions, questions that are inspiring you to inspire me. So I think he has a good connection too. Ooh, the wonders of the spirits. I have to admit though, all this talk of spirits is just making me want to get drunk. You know, then I can connect with more spirits. Thank you 50 Cent for inspiring me to say that. Yes, I did just get a vision of you and that's why I said that. I typed drunk into my search engine to see what pictures come up and that was the first one. Great. Why the fuck have I got this picture on my computer? So if they didn't have a desire to be healed, uh, and, and it had to be a true desire that they felt in their heart, not, a, not just an intellectual desire, then I couldn't heal them anyway. Dire so the... even crippled, blind, mm -hmm. um, those stories in the Bible? All those stories involving cripples and blind people and other physical ailments, including loss of limbs and all of those stories, are all true. But all the stories involving what I would call supernatural feats um, were not true. No. So, for example, the, the claim that I turned water into wine, for example, is not true. And the walking on the water? You didn't uh, no, go didn't. skiing that day? That no, I didn't walk on water, although I do believe... Did you find fish over possible. the other side of the boat in more uh, Yes, but that's quite quantity. simple. I think you've got that backwards. I don't believe you healed anyone, but it's highly likely that you did spend a day or two learning how to make wine out of water by, you know, watering vines, picking the grapes, making the wine out of grapes. And I also think you walked on puddles, which isn't exactly walking on water, but it kind of is because a puddle is water and you're kind of walking on it. So, yeah, Because all you have to do is have the psychic ability to have a spirit tell you that this is where the fish are. Translation, all you need is a brain to, to talk to people to know where fish are. Fish are in the sea or in aquariums or fish tanks or in a fish and chip shop. But yeah, it's a really stupid, boring question. You didn't um, calm the waters? Um, or did you calm the disciples? Well, both, probably. <laughs> um, the reality is you can calm your environment through your emotions. So the reality is the one reason why the Earth is experiencing a lot of quite difficult environmental events is because of the fear of the people on the Earth. And if you reduce the fear of people on the Earth, then the environment responds differently to the soul of the people on the Earth. So the reality is, is if you calm the individual at a soul level, then the environment around them also calms. And that's something that God created as a part of the truth of the, the environment we live in. Or you can just stop talking and then suddenly everything becomes quite calm and quiet. I don't actually get what you were saying there. I'm not too sure what's happening with this conversation, but I feel like it's suddenly gone kind of dumb. But I feel like it's things like this that will make people think that you're not Christ because 
you know, when people talk to someone who's supposed to be like a Christ or Messiah figure, you know, I feel like a lot of people would want to feel like they're learning something and gaining lots of information and nothing you've really said has given people this, wow, I'm impressed with that. That's what I feel. But you're Jesus, you're sort of the Antichrist and, you know, you're doing everything you should do, but I can do it better, which is good. Although I don't want to do it too good because I kind of want people to not realise that I'm actually God. You know, I'd prefer people just to see me as a dumb blonde. So, you know, I'm going to act up on, on personalities or sarcastic jokes or something just to get people to not think that I'm God. And that can be demonstrated scientifically and that's one of the things I'd certainly hope to demonstrate in the future scientifically. Um, so there are some truths that are presented in the scriptures about what I did and then there are some falsifications that tried to make me more powerful than I was in order to compare me with other, yeah. with other people who yeah. had likewise been lied about about what they did yeah. uh, in order to make it more palatable for different people to become Christian. But also this concept, there was this concept that they couldn't, uh, many people couldn't understand the degree of love that I displayed. And so then then began treating me as if I was some divine individual uh, or God, rather than just a person who was at one with God or or who had learnt from God. And so so yeah. that that was part of the problem. It was a this mis it was the misconception of people as well of what it meant to be at one with God. Yeah, mm. I look forward to the day when uh, people ask more about God and about love because that's certainly what we're passionate about. Yeah, the reality for both of us is that the Jesus and Mary Magdalene thing is not that Im we feel it's, is not that important to anybody else but ourselves. So your message is the more important thing. Of course. It's like, it's like your identity mm. is really important to yourself. Mm. Like you are who you are. Well, I guess and... it's important for this interview yeah. in that there is much scepticism about obviously what you claim and you expect that. Of course. Yes. And, and yeah. so I'm trying to address that scepticism. Yeah. Can I, but, can I point but, out, though, that you, when I met you, you came up to me and said that you were Jeff, and I didn't, dis I didn't have scepticism about your claim. No. <laughs> no. So, so the main purpose of the scepticism is because of my claim that I'm Jesus. It's not... Yeah. It's which, like if I was saying that I was just Alan John Miller, and, I, and I'm claiming I'm Alan John Miller, everyone's fine with that. But as soon mm. as I claim that I'm Jesus, that's when everybody becomes sceptical. And, in, and to some well, degree. Well, I guess because a lot of people regard Jesus, the historical Jesus, as being probably the most influential character of the last 2,000 years. Yeah. And when someone comes along and says, hey, I'm him, mm -hmm. you know, I guess we have the right to say, well, I need a little bit of proof here, you know. Um, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I don't know about the right. <laughs> um, I feel it's natural to desire to to discern whether it's truth or not. Uh, and we're perfectly and happy to answer any questions associated with it, but, but if a person demands of us the right, no. then, then, then I feel that, that they're a bit out of line, really. I understand that. You know, if people are demanding something from you, demanding proof, it's probably because they just want to insult you. They want to take anything that you have and criticise you. You know, they want to pick up on your story and prove that you're not who you say you are. But if people are just curious because they want to know your truth, you know, this might not be what they believe, but at the same time, they've got to be understanding to the fact that they can't disprove it. I mean, I think some of the things you say you can be disproved, but technically only God can disprove a lot of this stuff because you're talking about a spiritual realm, a realm that no one really knows anything about or a past life that no one has any real memories of except for the 14 other people who claim that they knew you in that time. Either I'm skeptical about these people because I believe that in 2013 I or 14 I told people that you were the real Jesus and so I'm, I'm wondering if these people heard what I was saying and then went to go and back you up to try and help you or encourage you. you know, I don't know when you met these people but I know people have been shifting things with the dates so I don't trust dates and I don't care if that's what they've done then that's fine. I mildly do remember there being a group of you but maybe I watched those videos you know like seven years or four years ago I can't actually remember Remember, my memory's not amazing. I want to know the truth, but I don't really want to know the truth. I mean, this is your life, hence it's more about you knowing the truth about your life. I think if you want to make a book about it, you should definitely do that, and you can make a ton of money from it, so that would be great. But, but yeah, I, I, it's not my life, so it's not my right to say what happened, and it's not my right to care either. 
it's not my life. Only someone who is pretty certain in their belief that they can prove that this is false, you know, someone who's maybe claiming to be God and can prove it, you know, only that really can set the record straight about what's truth and what's not. I've not really touched on the spiritual realm because everyone till now has just talked about, you know, meeting an auntie or, you know, meeting people that I don't know and therefore I can't prove it or disprove it. But I feel like I definitely can with you because I feel like I'm relating so much to what you're saying. I'm just understanding it from, you know, a mortal perspective and thinking that what you're saying is actually just talking about people on earth that have spirits and that drink a lot. I'm a big fan of drinking, so I've got to add that in. The the reality is that um, it will soon become apparent whether what we're claiming to be is true or not, you know. So, you know, if somebody comes and visits us in 10 years' time and we haven't progressed beyond what we are today, and we haven't done yeah. anything more than what we have done today, then I'm sure people would be very skeptical. This was filmed in 2011 and it's now 2024 and it's strange how there's like no videos of you, no new posts in the last like three or four years. What happened I wonder? Either you found out about me and have changed hence stopped preaching what you're preaching because you realize it's all wrong. But if that's the case why haven't you taken any of your videos down? Hmm, not too sure. Maybe you do know about me. Or maybe someone's paid you for your videos, hence have the rights to them, hence aren't going to be taking them down, but at the same time have also told you about the truth. I, I don't know. But I don't think it really matters. If you do know about me, it doesn't matter because the test was never for you. The test is for the world. So yeah. It would have been interesting though to sort of meet you and just say, hey, I'm Eve, and see if you believe or see if you respond. But yeah, I'm, I'm not picking on you. I would have made it very clear that I'm in support of you, even if it turns out you're lying about stuff. And until such a time as the so-called physical evidence or the miraculous evidence appears, which only appeared in the first century after I became at one with God, until such a time, there's probably going to be lots of disbelief about my claim.